Hey guys, it's Evan Chino back with another video, and um, I'm gonna make a couple videos today. Um, this first one is gonna be uh, my top five most surprising teams of 2022, and my next one will be my top five most disappointing. So, this video is gonna be, it's not the general uh, consensus agreement, this is my personal opinion. Of my top five most surprising teams. I'll talk about why I didn't think they were going to do much. And um, what they ended up doing. So um, let's get into it. So number five. I have to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, now the reason why I say they were surprising. Because last year they didn't really make any noise. They were. They had a 9-8 and eight regular season. They finished. They got destroyed in the wild card by Tampa last year and nobody like really expected this team to be really elite. They did add um AJ Brown during the off season, which has really helped. And in 2022 they finished with a 14 and 3 regular season and now they're in the Super Bowl and uh we'll see what happens there. But Philadelphia Eagles are my top number 5 team. They're in the Super Bowl, and they were just an average team last year, and now they're an elite, and I think the Eagles are going to be an elite team for years to come with Nick Sirianni. I think he's a great coach for them. Um, at number four, um, I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions. Um, they were a 3-13-1 team last year. Um Nobody really expected the Lions to do much this year. I mean, the only thing that got the Lions hyped up was um, they had a hard knocks series during the off season, during training camp and stuff like that. I didn't think they were going to do much. I thought the hype it was great, but I didn't think the Lions really had anybody that were going to make them a good team. Um, the Lions ended up going 9-8, and eight, and they barely missed the playoffs. Um, the Lions, I thought originally were going to be, weren't, they weren't going to be on this video. I thought they were just going to be another bad team. They started the season one and six, but, um, they had an eight and two finish to the end of the season and, um, they barely missed the playoffs. If, uh, the Rams would have beat Seattle in that final game, the Lions would be in the playoffs, would have made the playoffs. I don't think they would still be in it, but they would have been in it. Um, and Jared Goff had arguably the best season of his career. He, Jared Goff, he threw for 4,438 yards with 29 touchdowns to seven interceptions. And then after he threw two intercept, or no, I'm sorry. After he threw an interception against the first game against Green Bay, he would end his season with 12 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Really good. Jared Goff was an amazing quarterback this season. One of the best quarterbacks. Arguably, I think Jared Goff was the best quarterback of the NFC North this past season. So, and he's in the Pro Bowl. So, there you go. Good job, Jared. Um, but, I look, watch out for the Lions for years to come. They're going to make some noise. I think Dan Campbell's putting them in the right place. Um, the fact that they were able to go from 1-6 and six to 9-8 and eight with that team last year, and <laughs> part of it was getting rid of TJ Hawkinson, probably like the best player on their team, and they got rid of him, and after they did, they started just winning a bunch of games. But um, good job, Lions. 9-8, um, and eight, and everybody... Look out for the Lions in the future. I think they can make some noise. And next season, I think they could compete to win the NFC North. All right. So my number three most surprising team is the Seattle Seahawks. Um, everybody, a lot of people said the Seahawks were going to be terrible. Some people even had the Seahawks being the worst team in the NFL. They did quite the opposite. They went 9-8, and eight and they made the playoffs. They were a wild card team, but they lost right away to San Francisco. Um, Geno Smith was an amazing player. Um, everybody thought he was going to be terrible, that he wasn't going to be as great 
as Russell Will said, but Geno Smith ended up throwing for 4,282 yards, which is the eighth most in the league. He threw for 30 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. So I would say that Geno Smith had an amazing season. I think the best, the best season in his career. But the Seahawks proved they don't need Russell Wilson. And so far, it looked like the Seahawks won the Russell Wilson trade because they ended up doing better without him, and the Broncos did worse with him. So um, Seattle ended up going 9-8, and eight, made the playoffs, and not much more to say about Seattle. Um, the rookie running back, Kenneth Walker, did great. Um, he's up there. He couldn't possibly win offensive rookie of the year but unfortunately these awards are a quarterback award so it's probably going to be a quarterback actually i don't know why i'm saying that the offensive rookie of the year last year was a receiver but <laughs> we'll see how it goes but that's them so my number two um my number one and my number two i knew who they the teams what they were going to be but i was i couldn't figure out who i wanted to put at one and who i wanted to put at two these two teams were both really, really bad last year and ended up making the playoffs this year. But I'm going to go. My number two team is the New York Giants. Um, New York was terrible last year. They went 4-13 and 13 last year. Of course, you could say part of that was uh, da Daniel Jones got hurt toward the end of the year in 21. They had go back and forth with Mike Glennon and Jake Fromm. And I know Giants fans cringe at hearing those names, but um, the Giants acted like they were going to keep Joe Judge into this year. But then they fired him, and then their GM, Dave Gettleman, stepped down. And then they had a whole revamped roster and coaching staff this year. They had a new head coach. They brought in Bills offensive coordinator Brian Dable in to be their head coach. They got a new general manager. And then Daniel Jones came back. Saquon Barkley came back. They had great um, rookies with um, Kayvon Thibodeau. And then we thought Evan Neal, but he ended up not really being that good. Um, nobody really expected this team to make some noise, but they did. They went 9-7-1. And they made the playoffs, and they won a playoff game. They beat Minnesota in the wild card round until they got destroyed by Philadelphia in the divisional round. But if you were if you're a Giants fan, I think going from a four and thirteen season to losing in the divisional round the next season is a huge improvement. And I think um, the Giants are going to be another team to look out for in the future. I think Brian Dable is putting them in the right place. Um, Daniel Jones is finally um, sh showing signs of being the franchise quarterback that they wanted him to be. And the Giants almost fell off. The Giants had a 6-1 and one start to the season, but then they started losing a lot of games. They ended up finishing the season 3-6-1 and one after their 6-1 and one start. But it was still good enough to make the playoffs, and they won a playoff game. So... New York, your amazing job, and watch out for the Giants in the future. I feel like the Giants could end up being one of the best teams in the NFL in the future. But now my number one most surprising team in the NFL is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, the, Jacks the Jaguars were the worst team in the NFL for the past two years. They finished as the worst team in 2020 and 2021. They they only won a combined four games in 2020 and 2021. And they ended up winning nine games this year. They had a 9-8 and eight regular season, and they won a wild card game. They were down 27 nothing in the wild card against the Chargers, came back and beat them, and then lost a very close game to Kansas City in the divisional round. Um, Trevor Lawrence had a great season. Um, I knew that Trevor Lawrence was going to be good for Jacksonville last year. He was just in a pretty bad place, um, with urban Meyer. I, he just had to get a good coach and I thought them hiring Doug Peterson was great. I, Doug Peterson obviously is a great coach 
He proved that by winning Super Bowl 52 with Philadelphia, and I knew he was going to be he was going to be the guy to help put Jacksonville back on the map. And Trevor Lawrence had a great season with 4,101 4,113 yards, the ninth most in the league. He threw for 25 touchdowns, tied for eighth most, and he threw eight interceptions. 25 touchdowns to eight interceptions. A lot better than last year. He threw a lot of interceptions last year. And Russell and Russell Trevor Lawrence became the second quarterback in NFL history to throw for four interceptions in a playoff game and still win the game. Um, but the Jaguars are my most surprising team. I mean, obviously, did anybody think the Jaguars were going to make the playoffs this year? They went 3-14 and 14 last year. And even if we're like, okay, I think Doug Pierce is going to put them in the right place, I just don't think they were going to do it. And the Jaguars didn't look good at the start. They had a pretty poor start to the season. Um, they only they started out 2-6. and six, two and six. Or They started out 3-7. and seven. So, I mean, no... But after that, they really turned things around. They won the AFC South. They're only the second time the Jaguars have ever won the division. Last time was in 2017. And uh, the Jaguars, look out for them in the future. I think the Jaguars are going to be my favorite and win the AFC South again next season. And I think the Jaguars are going to be making some noise with Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson. And then Christian Kirk ended up being a great receiver. Everybody was talking crap about Christian Kirk, saying the Lions or the Jaguars overpaid him, and then he was going to be terrible. And then Christian Kirk ended up being a great receiver for them. He was their best receiver. And um, Travis Etienne was a great running back for Lawrence. He ran for over 1,000 yards and had five touchdowns. But um, watch out for Jacksonville in the future. Now, um, some on honorable mention – I have a couple honorable mentions. My first one is the San Francisco 49ers. Um, the only reason why I put them there, even though they made the NFC Championship last year, um, I put them because they ended up being really good with their third-string quarterback and Brock Purdy. But unfortunately for Brock, um, they just announced that because of his injury, he's going to miss the entirety of 2023 so the 49ers are probably going to have to settle with Trey Lance next season. And we'll see what happens for 49ers, but I'm not expecting much for San Fran next season. But the Niners' defense was the best defense in the NFL, and they the Niners didn't start off that good. They had a they were 3-4 um, and four to start the season. They ended up winning 10 games in a row to end the season 13-4, and four, and they were the second seed. But San Francisco was a surprising team for me. I didn't think they were going to be as good because they started off pretty bad because they were like, yeah, Trey Lance is our guy. And then he ended up breaking his foot or something in the second game, brought Jimmy G in. He wasn't that great. Then he suffered the same injury Trey Lance did, brought Brock Purdy in. He played amazing. And he could have been their quarterback for the is – is going to be their quarterback for the future in 2024 because 2023, Purdy's not going to play. And – um I think I've heard Jimmy G is leaving San Francisco, which he probably should. Jimmy G is a good quarterback. It's just I don't really think he wants to be a backup. He should probably go to a team that needs a quarterback. Um, my other pick for a surprising team is, and I swear this isn't biased, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, everybody was acting like the Steelers were going to be terrible this year. And it did look like that to start off with. The Steelers started off a, the season 3-7, and seven, um, and then they ended up turning things around after their three and seven start. They ended up finishing the season six and one, and they finished nine and eight. They barely missed the playoffs. And Kenny Pickett ended up being a great quarterback for us. Um, it didn't look good at the start, but ever but after the bye week, Pickett's been looking really good. He before the bye week, he threw. Uh, three touchdowns to eight interceptions. And then after the bye week, he threw five touchdowns to one interception. So Kenny Pickett is just going to get better. Um, he was only, he's just a rookie this year. I'm expecting he'll, he'll be a great quarterback for us next season and the future to come. But as long as Matt can as our offensive coordinator, we're not going anywhere. So 
So those are my picks for the most surprising teams in the NFL for 2022. And uh, my next video, I'm going to be talking about my most disappointing teams for 2022. And um, we'll see you guys there. Have a great one.